Guys, we have some positive news to talk about this morning, and it is some positive news that I think sort of underscores why it's really important for people who are in the press, people who are in the media, people who talk about phones and tech. It's really important for us to speak truth when it comes to things that the companies that we might actually really like overall, when they do things they shouldn't be doing, we have to actually call that stuff out. And if you do that, if we all do that sort of thing, sometimes even these big corporations will change course. Let's take a look at this article on Fandroid written by Mike, a buddy of mine, YouTube channel you should also be following. I'll link to them in the description down below. They write, Google gives in to pressure, announces Gemini Nano upgrade for the Pixel 8. So if you're a little bit out of the loop, maybe you don't know exactly what we're talking about when we talk about Gemini Nano. First off, I would understand that because the names are extremely confusing. Let me kind of give you a quick recap of what was going on and where now Google has changed course. A lot of people, when they hear Gemini Nano, they immediately think of Gemini, this thing you can run on any phone that is an assistant replacement. It's going to be able to answer questions and do all sorts of really interesting things on pretty much any phone. That's not what we're talking about. That is Google Gemini, but that's not the same thing as Gemini Nano, which is a large language model that can run directly on your device. It runs locally instead of in the cloud. Basically, Google has like three versions of Gemini, which is their large language model. There's Nano, there is Ultra, and there is Pro, I think. I may be getting these wrong, but there's basically like a small version, a medium version, and like a super advanced version. Nano can run directly on your hardware, not this hardware notably, but that's a topic for another time, but on some hardware, it can run directly on it, so nothing has to go to the cloud and come back, and then the other two versions run in a data center in the cloud. Gemini, the website or the assistant replacement, is powered by the two cloud versions of Gemini. Again, this is very confusing. So what does Gemini Nano do, given it can run directly on your device? I think that Mike actually mentioned some of this. And bear in mind, of course, before I show you the things that it can currently do, that it's going to be able to do more things as time goes on. As Gemini Nano gets more and more powerful, as our devices get more and more powerful, it's going to be able to do more and more things, and it's going to be able to do them quicker than if you have to send stuff to the cloud and back. And that's sort of the appeal of Gemini Nano, is that it doesn't require off-device computing. So it's limited today but they've just launched it like several months ago, right? So it's going to grow, it's going to get better and better, and that's why some of the stuff is, it's a bigger deal for the future than it maybe is today. So with that being said, let's jump back into those features. It will power the summarizer in the recorder. It can power the smart reply feature in Gboard. So nothing like crazy, crazy massive, but it does do some interesting things that again, don't have to go to the cloud. So you use the Google recorder and you can have that long transcript of like an hour long meeting, hit a button and it's gonna summarize that for you and give you bullet points. That's really, really cool. Or of course, smart reply inside Gboard. Now the place that they had changed course was that a couple of weeks ago, or maybe a 10 days ago, something like that, it was announced, kind of unofficially announced in a podcast that Google puts out, that Gemini Nano would not be running on the standard Pixel 8. It would be only on the Pixel 8 Pro. And of course, a lot of people, myself included, made posts, made videos, made comments about the fact that that was a little bit silly because these two devices run the exact same hardware, the same processor. Now there is a RAM difference, right? I think it's 12 gigs versus eight or something like that. But that should not be enough to prevent Gemini Nano from running on the Pixel 8. It is running, Gemini Nano, on Samsung devices running Exynos processors. It's running on phones that have a Dimensity processor. So a lot of us were like, you can't tell me it can't run on the Pixel 8. You are 100% doing this as a differentiator between the 8 and the 8 Pro. It's a method to make the 8 Pro a little bit better and thereby drive sales towards the Pixel 8. This is an artificial limitation of this artificial intelligence. Now, back to this article again. We have a new quote from Google. Quote, 
We've seen a lot of excitement from users and developers since Pixel 8 Pro became the first smartphone to get Gemini Nano last year. Running large language models on phones with different memory specs can deliver different user experiences. So they're hinting that perhaps the RAM was the holdup. So we have been testing and validating this on the Pixel 8. We're excited to provide the opportunity for more enthusiasts and developers to try out Gemini Nano, where we hope to get more feedback and see more innovation. So I do want to jump over to this article on 9to5Google because they go a little bit more in depth. And I don't know exactly where they're getting all of this from because we have this quote and they don't really seem to have like another deeper quote, but they do make some claims here that I'm going to kind of pass along to you. Google bringing Gemini Nano to Pixel 8 with the next feature drop. So if we scroll down here, they go a bit further. They're going to be bringing it in developer preview to power, summarize, and recorder, and Gboard smart reply. So again, if I go back to this quote, they make no mention of specific features, but 9to5Google seems to believe these things, these exact features, are in fact coming to the Pixel 8. So that is definitely good to see. They come down here again and they say it's RAM. 8 gigabytes versus 12 gigabytes that are the main hardware difference. And it looks like Google may have found a way to run the LLM on less RAM without impacting the rest of the user experience with the smaller S24 doing the same. And that kind of harkens back to the original problem and sort of my inability to believe them on this because the smaller S24 also had 8 gigs of RAM and it was pulling it off. So again, the Pixel 8, there was no real good excuse for this to not come to that lower end Pixel 8. As you see here, the S24 standard model could come with 12 gigs of RAM if you got the 256 variant with that, but most of them are 8 gigs of RAM. And again, it was handling it just fine. So again, they say here it's coming with the next feature drop, which should be Android 14 QPR3, which should be in June if previous uh, timelines remain in place. It's kind of hard to say because these updates have been a little bit weird. Timing's been a little bit weird, but that's what they feel like is going to happen. Next feature drop, QPR3. It's good to see. Now, look, I'd love to give Google the benefit of the doubt on this one and say that there was a technical limitation they ran into. They felt like it wouldn't work well enough. So they said, we're not going to do it. We're not going to give you guys a subpar feature. We're just going to restrict it to the pro. And then after all of the outcry, they thought, wow, they really want this. So they put in the overtime, they worked their tails off, and they managed to find a way to make it work. And here it is. But I don't think that's what happened. I do think that they were intentionally limiting it. They saw the backlash. They saw it was making them look bad, that they were limiting this feature artificially. And they decided to double back around and do the thing that they should have done in the very beginning. Maybe they thought nobody would notice, but we noticed and we were vocal. And because of that, this feature is coming. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Obviously, this is good news across the board. This is great to see Google doubling back and fixing something like this. Hopefully, this is a lesson learned. There are some other devices where perhaps they could apply these sorts of lessons, and maybe they will going forward. Again, drop those comments down below, and I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.